In today's video, we're gonna put two mini PCs head to head, which means the long awaited return of David's Deathmatch Arena of Death. In the one corner, we have the Top Top Gaming Mini PC, which I've actually done a video on before. And in that video, I promised a follow up video, which never happened because this little PC is a liar. But we'll get into that later in the video. And in the other corner, we have the Minis Forum Elite Mini HX90. Two titans of the mini PC world battling head to head. Which of these two beasts will end up on top? Uh, I actually think it's pretty obvious which one's gonna win when you just look at the specs, but we'll get into that uh, later. Also, today's video is sponsored by Autonomous, but again, more on that later. Now before we get into the head-to-head -head comparison, we need to first have a closer look at the Minis Forum Elite Mini, because, well, we've had a look at the other one, we need to see what's going on on the insides of this bad boy. Full disclosure, Mini's forum did send over the HX90 for this video, but with features as impressive as Kuo architecture inside, I don't think it makes it any less interesting. Some good quality foam with the little mini PC in there. Let's take it out. And then under here are the accessories that you get with it. It comes with a weighted plastic base so that you can put it in what I can only describe as portrait mode. Next up, there is quite a chunky power brick, which is to be expected. It's, it's got quite high end hardware in it. And then you also have a VESA mount, which is pretty cool. That gives you some flexibility in terms of mounting options. And here she is. <laughs> Now the first thing that I notice is that there is quite a lot of ventilation on here. This is a ventilated panel and then there's actually ventilation on both sides. You can see through the unit uh, and that should help it stay nice and cool. Now we'll discuss exactly what hardware is in here when we're comparing the two PCs to each other. But while not wishing to spoil anything, I'm concerned this little HX90 may get curb stomped in today's video. Now in terms of rear I.O., you do have quite a lot of options, especially when it comes to display outs. So you've got two HDMI and two display ports. You've also got a microphone headphone jack. It's also got 2.5 gig LAN, which is awesome. And then four USB 3 ports. And finally, there's some stuff on the front, including a power button. Yeah, there we go. Ooh. Oh, okay, I guess we're starting off with the bottom of the unit where we have a 256 gig SSD with a Wi-Fi module underneath there. Now you do have the option to buy this as a bare bones kit and you can also mount two 2.5 inch SSDs on this metal plate. Other than that, there's not a whole lot going on under here. So let's flip it around and turn, open it up on this side. Come on. It's destroying my little splooger. 20 minutes later. It is now 20 minutes later and I was actually struggling to get it open because I was assuming that you had to take the top panel off, but apparently you need to just kind of pry the motherboard out like that, which I, I don't like that very much. That, that feels like it isn't the best implementation for getting the motherboard out. Now it's stuck. Ooh. Ooh. That just broke my tool. Oh. Okay, I think it's loose. That That is not a nice disassembly process at all. And here we have it. It's a pretty good looking motherboard actually. First thing is we have dual channel RAM, which is awesome considering that this is a Ryzen based APU. So that should help. This is actually 3200 megahertz DDR4 RAM, uh, which isn't the fastest, but it's it's possible. It's not too bad. Over here, we have a pretty good looking heatsink. It's not massive, but they do use liquid metal to interface between the two. So I think the temperatures should be pretty good on here. And then we have the cutest little uh, power delivery heatsink over here with what looks like it's a four phase. It could be a three plus one. I'm not entirely sure there. Uh, you do actually have an additional four pin fan header. So that is interesting. Um, 
I'm not quite sure what they expect you to do with that, but it's nice to have options like that. And then down here, we have our supplemental SATA cables. So that's for the two SSDs that you can actually mount on here. So with that, let's put it back together and then do a bit of a physical comparison with the top top, and then we'll do some gaming with the two. But before all of that, it's time for some autonomous action. Today's video is sponsored by Autonomous and their fancy smart desk core sit-stand desks. With their solid steel frames, they can lift up to 265 pounds from a minimum height of 29.4 inches to a max height of 48 inches. As someone who's not American, I have no idea what those units mean, but they sure do sound impressive. The Autonomous desks are also very easy to use with up to four memory functions, which means you can get to a bunch of predetermined heights just with one click of a button. The regular size of the smart desk core is very generously proportioned, so even if you are the most aggressive flicker while gaming, you'll have more than enough desk mat space, although you do have the option for an XL desk. If this sounds good to you, you can check out your brand new smart desk with a 5% discount using the offer code 21david5 with the link in the description below. Thank you Autonomous for sponsoring today's video. Physically, the two are quite similar. However, the HS90 is a bit more chody, whereas the top top is a bit more pizza boxy. But in terms of overall volume, the top top's actually a little bit smaller than the HS90. Internally, the cooling solutions are a bit more different. The top top has what looks like a beefy laptop cooler, whereas the HS90 is more like a standard small CPU cooler. In terms of internal layout, I definitely prefer the top top because all you need to do to get to any of the upgradable bits on the inside is lift the back off and it's just all there. Whereas with the HS90, <laughs> you have to suffer several brain aneurysms to get your RAM. Especially considering that the manual is aggressively unhelpful. How can it go straight from remove back panel to install RAM without mentioning the very important intermediate step of Hulk smash? Which means I would not recommend getting the bare bones configuration of the HS90, because I don't think becoming intimately acquainted with your device's mortality before powering it up the first time makes for a good user experience. Now in terms of specs, this is where things start to get a bit dicey for one of our mini computers. Now the HS90 has a truly astounding CPU in it. The Ryzen 9 5900H in the HS90 is a marvel of engineering. We'll, we'll see that later on. However, in terms of GPU horsepower, um, it, it's just got a Vega iGPU in it, which would have been fine if it wasn't for the top top. The top top has a much lamer CPU in it. The configuration I have has an i9-9880H in it, which is not even the configuration I'd recommend. I'd recommend you should go for the 9750H variant, which will cost less, it won't affect your gaming performance too much, and you'll probably have better thermals as well. But the place where it becomes dicey is in terms of graphics, because the top top has a GTX 1650 in it. Now a lot of you may be going, David, then this is a very unfair comparison. Why are you comparing these two devices? Um, well, it's not unfair because they're both small, powerful PCs that are primarily marketed towards gamers. And in terms of pricing, it's less unfair because, well, the prices fluctuate the whole time due to sales and stuff. But if you get the 9750H variant with the list price on AliExpress, it costs pretty much exactly the same as the HS90. In fact, the i9 version that I have in this video is actually also not that far off. And then, if you take sale prices into account, you can regularly get the top top for like $200 less than the sale price of the HS90. Which means, yeah, I think now is a good time to have a look at the gaming benchmarks. Now, if you're a small child watching this without parental supervision, I'd probably shield my eyes right now because things are about to get gratuitous.
as you can see, it is not even close in terms of gaming performance between these two. In most cases, the 1% lows on the top top is higher than the average frame per second on the HS90. And that's even more shocking when you compare the Battlefield 5 results, where the one's running at 1080p and the other ones are running at 720p. Like, damn, that is not good. Now, it's not all bad news for the HS90, because again, like I mentioned before, the Ryzen 9 5900H is a truly astounding CPU. In terms of Cinebench performance, it is a lot faster than an 8-core 16-thread desktop CPU from only like four years ago. It is so fast and efficient, and it's an amazing CPU. And in terms of Cinebench, and I'm guessing every other CPU benchmark, it absolutely blows its load in the face of the i9 and the top top. Also, the thermals and noise are way better on the HS90, but then again, it doesn't have a dedicated GPU to deal with. And the thermals and noise aren't as bad on the top top as I remember, it's acceptable considering what it is. So when all said and done, the HS90 reminds me a bit of one of those crabs that has like the one huge pincer and then like the other tiny pincer and it ends up having to do everything with the tiny pincer. And it means that unless the only thing you care about is insane CPU performance and like just a very impressive CPU architecture, uh, I, I'd probably go with the top top instead, even if you have to get that lame old Intel CPU. Which brings me to the end of the video. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed it, like and subscribe to the channel for more videos like this one. And until the next video, bye bye.